Hi all. Uh, in this video, we are going to see about VLAN and DTP. Let's get into the video. First of all, what is VLAN? VLAN is nothing but a virtual LAN. Uh, what it means is, uh, just take a switch. A physical switch is being fitted into several logical switch is what we call as a VLAN. In simple terms, we want to say means um, splitting of a single switch into multiple switches. In the sense, if you are having a single switch consider to be as a 24 port switch you are having and it all comes under a single broadcast domain that means a single switch uh, you can't uh, when you connect it to one port and it, mm, connect another pc to the port number 24 when you ping from this pc to that pc you could able to reach or that mm, this end to that end this pc to that pc it could be reachable but when you are using a vlan it helps to to break up a broadcast domain and it acts like a multiple switches in the sense uh, if you are creating a VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, consider you are creating a two VLANs and assigning port number from 1 to, 20, 1 to 10 in VLAN uh, 10 and port number 11 to 20 in VLAN 20 and just connect a switch to v port number 1 and port number 20. When you try to ping means it won't ping. It, uh, what it assumes is it just thinks it doesn't belong to our network. That means um, I'm different switch and this is different switch. This belongs to different segment. I belongs to different segment. In the sense, it thinks and uh, it helps you to communicate with only particular VLAN. If VLAN 10 wants to communicate, it will communicate with only VLAN 10. If VLAN 20 needs to communicate, it communicate with VLAN 20. So what uh, VLAN is simply it just splits off a single physical switch into a multiple logical switches. The default VLAN native VLAN value is VLAN 1. It will be in all the switches. Next, what are the advantages of VLAN? This is what I said. Um, every VLAN, um, VLAN is a single broadcast domain, which means each VLAN is being a single broadcast domain. If a switch has a three VLANs, it acts like a three broadcast domain. That's what a single broadcast domain in the sense. Uh, if VLAN 10 wants to communicate with VLAN 20, it will not do. In order to communicate, we need a L3 device, such as a L3 switch or router. Users can communicate only within the same VLAN normally. Within the L2 level, they can only communicate within the same VLAN or uh, the users from one VLAN couldn't be able to communicate with the other VLAN. Uh, another one main advantage of using uh, this VLAN is that if suppose uh, one person is sitting in the first floor and the other guy belongs to the same department, he may be sitting in the uh, third or fourth floor. If they both want to communicate, they don't need to be in the same um, place. They don't need to be uh, the, in this, uh, connected to the same switch or whatever. But by using VLAN, uh, we can able to communicate from first uh, first floor guy can communicate with the even a third or fourth floor guy. But they all they needs to be in the same VLAN segment. That's it. If they can be able to communicate with each other, this is one of the major advantage of using a VLAN. Let's take a uh, look into the VLAN Ethernet frame. How does it look like? It's look like a normal Ethernet frame, but the difference is that. It is having an uh, additional field called as a tag. In the tag field, it has a VLAN identifier. Uh, this is the place where we can able to identify the VLAN. That is VLAN 10 or VLAN 20, what are the qualification uh, characteristics. This is the details and all will be there. And with this, we can able to communicate with other end. What are the ports in the VLAN? We can just think of a ports means a trunk and access port. Uh, what is a trunk and what is the access? A trunk is used to communicate between the switches um, where we can able to allow more than one VLAN. It can be 2, 10, 20, 30. How many VLANs is allowed? We can able to allow in trunk port. If you configure a port, that is a switch port as an access port, uh, we can allow only one VLAN. We couldn't be able to use more than one VLAN uh, in access port. Usually, access port will be uh, configured at a host end that is being connected to a PCN. Some of the basic characteristics of a VLAN. VLAN will never be uh, saved in the running configuration or startup configuration. It will be saved in a separate file, which you call as a VLAN dot DAC. Um, even if you uh, re erase the running configuration, the VLAN information will not be removed. If you want to remove the VLAN information from the switch, what you have to do is you just want to use a different command called as delete flash colon vlan dot that this only will remove the vlan information uh, th this is this everyone should have to remember about it because it will not be uh, 
saved in the running configuration it will be saved in the flash memory in the file called as vlan.dat next we move on to the dynamic functioning protocol dtp what is a dtp means uh, we just um, we just see about a uh, access and a trunk port that we configure manually suppose uh, it is being taken dynamically by the switches here uh, there are two other ports which called as a dynamic auto and dynamic desirable which can be configured um, it will not it will take it automatically based on the switch problem switch configuration itself here the switch will dynamically take its port status as access or trunk based on the dynamic configuration of the switch port it doesn't care whether it is access or switch that is being configured whatever it be it will take based on the both port status this is what it do some of the outputs i'll be showing here if one port is being configured as a trunk if the other port is con configured as a trunk the output will be the trunk this is a manual configuration which we do if one port is access and other port is trunk it will not work it will show you as a error that's what is being shown here as a limiter and next if you configure a one port as uh, auto mode there is a dynamic auto and the other port as a trunk it will automatically be con uh, acceptable as a trunk port if it is a desirable also it will be considered to be as a trunk port if you are configuring one port and access um, trunk, it will not be working. That's why it's called as a limiter. If suppose both port is access, it will be as a manual configuration. It will be considered to be as a access port. If it is been dynamic auto and access port, it will be access port. Dynamic desirable and access port, it will be access port. Uh, what it does is, it will not take up a manual configuration. It will just take up its own uh, overview of um, taking up a port status based on the configuration of both the switches. It doesn't look into a single port switch it takes up uh, both the switch states and then it will um, end up in the operational mode so it's good to configure manually than the uh, dynamic configuration that's it thanks for watching until next time